Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous day on the planet here and at least in South Austin, Texas, unbelievably gorgeous day on the planet. Uh, we have made it to Monday, October 7th, 2013. So Monday morning, this is the time when everyone else is getting in traffic, heading to their cubicles, all of those wage slaves. I'm doing what I do on Monday, which is climbing up on this rock to bring you my weekly economic meltdown roundup rant, where I go on the pages of the mainstream media, in this case, the Yahoo News Finance page, to bring you more evidence that the economy in this country and on this planet is going straight to hell in a handbasket, and it was a pretty easy job for me today because as you've probably figured out by now unless you live under this rock we're going in what is this now day seven of this partial government shutdown uh shutting down my ass i wish uh anyway it's a start uh, the shutdown is a start and so we are seeing if by day seven it is having any effect. As I was up here last week, uh, you know, looking ahead at these various economic profits, claiming that it was going to make zero effect at all on the U.S. economy. And so we're going to wade in and look at how the stock market is shaping up that uh, Needless to say, the vast majority of stories today are on this. Three out of my six will be on this. But I'm going to start off my rant with some uh, good news for us precious metals investors. You know, the first place I always start on Monday morning is looking at the silver charts. And I see that I have made, well, uh, if I own 2,000 ounces of silver, I have made about $1,500 today uh, and I and I can thank uh, I can thank the government shutdown and the looming debt limit crisis and Ben Bernanke I can I can thank Ben Bernanke and John Boner as much as any two people on the planet for putting fifteen hundred dollars into my silver portfolio today so this is what Bloomberg has to say about the precious metals market reaction to all of these shenanigans going on all over Washington, everywhere from the Federal Reserve to Congress. Okay, gold climbs with silver on a U.S. stimulus outlook amid debt talks. And this is Bloom what Bloomberg has to tell us all. Okay. Gold advanced as investors assessed the impact on monetary stimulus as U.S. lawmakers wrangled over the debt limit and a partial, partial government shutdown entered a seventh day and silver, platinum, and palladium all also gained on this, uh, on, on all of this horseshit coming out of Washington as investors are starting to think, huh, maybe there is a little bit going on here. Let's see. Let's see. I guess gold is up 0.6% to 1319 an ounce. Uh, silver uh, started off today about about 21.75 was up to 22.45 by about noon. I, I was actually I'm late with this rant today. I've noticed that in the past hour, unfortunately, it's come down about 13 cents. Okay. Uh, then they're talking about the ups and downs of the gold and silver market. Uh, it's 
Anyway, guys, unfortunately, I wish this uh, article went deeper into it. It's pretty much just talking about the about the prices, and it's not really an analysis of the, what you can expect as the gold climbs. Gold climbs. Well at gold and silver climb and that not surprisingly goes right hand in hand as it should uh, with Wall Street falls as uncertainty grows over government shutdown so I am going to look at three mainstream media analyses of how the government shutdown is affecting the stock market and by proxy the US economy. This is Reuters spin on it. Wall Street falls as uncertainty grows over government shutdown. Okay. US stocks fell on Monday, extending their two week decline as the ongoing US government shutdown kept investors jittery with no sign that politicians were willing to relax positions over the budget impasse or the debt ceiling. I'm uh, now I'm going to talk about the debt ceiling in a minute. You know, trying to extricate the, the this horseshit government shutdown with the much 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 bigger impending story of the debt ceiling which we will be reaching in what 10 more days that is the bigger story but you better believe they're playing hand in hand that this this, this latest uh, gridlock over the budget is just the opening salvo for the bigger story so it's impossible to extricate these but I'm gonna do the best I can uh, trying to here Okay, where is the stock market? Uh, it's the major U.S. stock indexes have started to come off their lows. Uh, right, right while I'm sitting on this rock, there is a little turn, or, turn an uptick, just as there's a, a downtick in the silver thing. But I guess the Dow Jones bottomed out at more than 150 points. Uh, uh, let's see, everything is down. Uh, they're all down. Dow Jones Industrial was down 104 points. Uh, Standard & Poor's 500 index down 10 points. NASDAQ down 28 points. Global mark, well, Asian markets, uh, they're reflecting the same. So how much of this, the, the downtick going on over there in Asia, as well as on Wall Street, all tied into this. Um, let's see, in addition to that, reflecting a rise in the level of investor anxiety, the CBOE Volatility Index which is Wall Street's so-called fear gauge jumped 8.8% to 18.22, its highest since late June. So as all of the stock markets were falling this morning, Wall Street's fear index was jumping right up there to its highest since late June. And so there's probably no surprise about the dot connecting to the gold and silver market. Uh, this is Andrew Wilkinson, chief economic strategist, one of, the, one of these economic strategists. Quote, thus far, investors have felt assured that they are watching the reruns of an old cliffhanger movie. Uh, but the rising frequency of the replay has installed a sense of deja vu uh, with each political party pointing fingers at the other as the cliff approaches, talking about this cliff being the, the, uh, the debt ceiling, uh, which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, 
And that's the investors feel not only rising risks brought about by growing uncertainty, but also that those risks are becoming less transparent because of the lack of data collection. He's talking about, as I mentioned, uh, you know, what a loss to the world. They, did, they were not, because of the government shutdown, one of the casualties was this completely horseshit jobs numbers report did not come out last week. Now it is a real loss to the planet. Anyway, I'm going to put links to all of these, uh, all of these guys. So anyone who wants to read these for yourself, let's go now. Let's see how CNBC, probably the most mainstream of corporate controlled mainstream media of them all, CNBC, danger grows as shutdown heads into second week. I love these words. Uh, gold climbs, Wall Street falls, and now danger grows as the shutdown heads into second week. All right. With no end in sight, the near week old partial U.S. government shutdown is putting growth in the world's largest economy under further threat with each passing day, economists say. All right, this is coming from Bank of America, Merrill Lynch economist. All right, Bank of America, anyway, it's a bunch of the, the, these goddamn evil bankers. I don't, I don't give a damn what their names are. They're all peas out of the same pod, uh, and there's so much that I guess they just, they just manage to crunch, put actually quote marks, direct quote marks, around two different people. This is, this is a new trick of the mainstream media that uh, these bankers are so interchangeable that uh, they, they, they can now do this. Uh, putting a direct quote coming out of two people's mouths at the same time, and it would be this quote. Both we and the consensus have had a baseline forecast that the government shutdown will be too short to impact fourth quarter GTP, GDP growth. However, with the shutdown approaching its one week anniversary, love that, one week anniversary, and with both sides digging in their heels, that assumption is looking increasingly untenable. Okay, so I guess they're talking about Bank of America here cut its U.S. gross domestic product growth forecast for October, December to 2% from 2.5%. So this, the estimate is based on an assumption that the shutdown will last two weeks uh, and, and there is no violation of the debt ceiling. So based on those two uh, completely uh, volatile assumptions, they cut their growth uh, forecast. A continu continuing uh, with this, many sectors that rely on the federal government for approvals or information are being impacted. Uh, the tourism and travel industry is hurt by the shutdown of national parks and companies in the defense industry are already starting layoffs. Although most of that uh, is caving in all of this talk. I was cheering on uh, just a couple of days ago the, these cuts in the defense industry, but a lot of that, guys, to my dismay, is being, uh, somehow they're finding ways to keep all of these defense contractors uh, right on working. The war planes, the war machine uh, keeps dragging on. Somehow the war machine and the spy machine, you know, good God, it goes on and on. All right, uh, let's, see. let's look over here. What is Goldman Sachs? 
our friends at Goldman Sachs are saying, uh, according to Goldman Sachs, uh, quote, with, well, so they're, uh, they're talking about how, well, let me back up a minute, how, how they're waffling on this. Uh, you know, aside from the Pentagon decision to bring most of its 400,000 furloughed civilian employees back to work and the House of Representatives passing legislation that would retroactively pay furloughed workers once the shutdown has ended, there was little evidence of progress in ending the federal shutdown over the weekend. And according to Goldman Sachs, these two steps could in fact prolong the duration of the shutdown. And this does make sense. Quote, with fewer employees affected, Congress may face less pressure to address the remaining areas. Uh, Goldman Sachs economist wrote in a note on Sunday, and back to uh, these Bank of America Merrill Lynch guys, uh, they also expect the shutdown pers to persist, noting that with the stock markets remaining mostly resilient, that uh, there's still, I mean, the, the, little, the little drops in the stock market uh, aren't, aren't much. There is less pressure on policymakers to come to a compromise. Quote, so far there has been no obvious economic or market cost to the shutdown, and if it doesn't hurt, why stop? So there you go. So uh, maybe this shutdown will keep on. So let's, that would, uh, let's look, let's move on now to the next one, if it doesn't shut down. Okay, this is from the Daily Ticker. Uh, some guy named Barry Rifles. Stocks could fall 20 to 30 percent if shutdown is not resolved. Right now they've fallen this day, what, what did I say, about one half of one percent. But it could get a lot worse according to this one guy. Uh, this is Barry Ritholtz, is the chief investment officer of some wealth management agent. When you, wouldn't you love uh, to have a, a wealth management agency looking after your money? My wealth management agency is a sewer pipe in, uh, in East Texas full of silver dollars. That is the Hambone Wealth Management Agency. A sewer pipe full of silver dollars. But anyway, what does this guy say? This I. The government shutdown and the looming debt ceiling debate are dominating headlines but haven't really made much of a dent in the stock market uh, so far. Uh, so according to Barry, quote, it turns out the market really doesn't care much if the shutdown is a day or a couple of weeks. Where it becomes a concern is if weeks turn into months. If it goes past three or four weeks, that could take a big chunk of GDP, affect consumer confidence, and really have an impact on earnings. And that how big a chunk of GDP is subject to debate. Uh, According to one estimate, uh, every week of the shutdown will, will cut 0.3 percentage points from GDP. That's according to Standard and Poor's. Uh, let's say if, if the shutdown lasts the entire month of October, they estimate quarterly GDP growth would be uh, down 0 0.7 uh, points. Whatever the true impact, economists agree 
the absence of, of federal spending and as importantly, the direct and indirect effects of 800,000 federal workers being furloughed will crimp an economy that's producing subpar growth absent any shutdown. Okay, quote, uh, one more quote from this guy. It's not that the market is so horrifically expensive, but earnings are at a high cyclical level. If we do anything to damage that, you risk a 20 to 30 percent correction in the market if this shutdown goes on a month or longer. And so we will see. Time will tell uh, the old doomsday prophet. And, and, and guys, I admit, I'm thrilled to report that I called it wrong. I thought that they were going to avoid this, uh, th this ridiculous uh, government shutdown in the 11th hour. Well, they didn't. And uh, anything that this government shutdown can do uh, to hurt uh, this economy is good news for this planet. Uh, for those of you who have not figured out uh, why an environmental alarmist would be talking about uh, the upcoming economic crash, it, it is, it, it, I, well, I am completely hopeless about this planet, but if there's any ray of hope uh, that we have our only chance of saving this planet, is to bring down this economy. And guys, the bigger story uh, for anyone not uh, following this, that this government shutdown, as I mentioned ago, is the little story. It is this upcoming debt ceiling uh, that we're supposed to hit on October 17th and 10 days from now is the bigger story that uh, if we do hit this debt ceiling, uh, John Boner uh, will become Hammond Littletail's biggest, uh, biggest hero. Uh, you go, John Boner. Uh, now, my prediction is, as Boner has even said, it's not going to happen. We are not going, this isn't going to happen. There is going to be some some uh, 11th hour compromise between all of these uh, chess beaters and finger pointers. But on the slim chance, and this, uh, if you want to find out, uh, there's not enough stories. This is as good a one as any. I'm putting the link to all these stories. This is from Breakout. Catastrophic consequences of a U.S. default explained. And this, uh, these catastrophic consequences bring absolute joy to any eco-Nazi's heart. Because, uh, and, and, and since I am so hopeless, I am completely hopeless that the planet will be enjoying these catastrophic consequences uh, outlined in this story. But uh, I, I can sure as hell salivate me and Derek Jensen and uh, anybody else who uh, wants to bring down the global industrial economy uh, can, can just salivate about these catastrophes. There is no, there would be no better first step of bringing down the global industrial economy than uh, having us hit the debt ceiling in 10 days. So, and it ain't going to happen. Uh, everyone from John Boner to Barack Obama is not going to let that happen. Man, but as much as I wish it would, so I'm just going to have a little ham bone fantasy and read you some of this and put the link on here. Okay. <clears throat> Where did I say this was from? I guess this is directly from Yahoo News Breakout. I think Breakout is, is, is directly part of Yahoo. Anyway, as we close out the first week of the government shutdown, a bigger and even more 
toxic disaster is creeping into the fray that could make the contentious budget battle look like a slap fight. The Treasury Department has said Uncle Sam will be broke by October 17th unless something is done. And Treasury Secretary Jack Lew hammered home that point Thursday by releasing an unusually ominous statement that warned of catastrophic risks to the economy. House Speaker John Boner has said he won't let the government default on its debt. But until steps are taken to raise the nation's debt ceiling, the possibility of default is still theoretically alive. As I, you know, I, I need to do a rant on John Boner someday. Who is this guy? He's, some, he's the Speaker of the House, the Republican-dominated Speaker of the House of Representatives. Like, I know who this guy is on one level, but really, who is this guy? Uh, this guy sounds like even more than Barack Obama, this John Boner guy, the, the, some uh, right-wing Tea Party uh, conservative Republican. He's not even a, a senator. He, he's a lousy uh, congressman. Uh, could do more to save this planet at this moment than anybody on this planet. The, the fate of planet Earth could be hanging in John Boner's hands. But of course, he said that, don't worry, uh, uh, I will not save the planet. But anyway, just in case uh, the ham bone wet dream comes true and John Boner does decide to save this planet by letting the U.S. government default on its debt, uh, what would this, what would uh, happen? So this is an interview with a guy named Richard Bove, B-O-V-E, VP of Research at Rafferty capital markets and uh, okay there's a there's a video along with this and in this video he explains how the fallout would be a lot worse than the recession suffered in 2008 and the aftershocks would be felt for at least a decade quote if they seriously default on the debt, what we're really talking about is a depression. The first thing you have to do is look at who holds the debt. Okay, the first biggest owner of U.S. debt, it's, it's not China if you thought it was, is the Social Security Fund. So you would have all of these people who are receiving Social Security payments who now have to question whether they'll get their payments. Uh, so clearly that would cause huge disruptions to millions of Americans, but Bove says that is only the beginning since the second biggest holder of Treasuries, uh, uh, about 12% of the total, uh, again, guys, is not China. It is our own, drum roll please, Federal Reserve. <laughs> Which, listen to this, take a wild guess how much of the Federal Reserve's assets is backed by U.S. government debt. Are you thinking 20%? 50%, how about 91%? 91% of the Federal Reserve's, uh, <laughs> oh boy, 91% where uh, of their assets backed by uh, U.S. government debt. Uh, if the value of those assets were declined, which they indisputably would in a default, Bove says the net effect would be that we have nothing of value backing the dollar. Uh, gee, and I don't need to start bringing in the dots to my, those 2,000 silver dollars. 
in my sewer pipe uh, wealth management uh, that have made me $1,500 today. Okay, they're actually Federal Reserve money. And talk about dollars. It's, it's not, as, as even the mainstream media is pointing out here, we have nothing of value backing the dollar. Now, guys, remember, they're not dollars. They're Federal Reserve notes. Oh, as well as the number one asset of choice held in the reserves of governments and businesses all over the world. A plunge in treasuries uh, would devalue the dollar, which would instantly make everything we buy more expensive and in turn destabilize countries and economies all over the world. Okay, so guess who owns, coming in third, finally, who do you think, I've kind of given away the punchline, which foreign country owns 11% of our country's debt? Take a wild guess. 11% of all U.S. debt is now owned by the Chinese. That $1.4 trillion represents about one-third, one-third of the total reserves of the People's Bank of China. And so what we've now said to the People's Bank of China is, watch out, we may hit the value of one-third of your assets and you can't do anything about it. There you go. So, uh, I actually, I, I don't know if she's here or not, we actually have a, a Chinese citizen who might or might not be listening to this rant. Uh, and this goes on, and this isn't even half of it. Okay. As both, anyway, uh, guys, uh, this goes on and on. Uh, you know, finally just saying, uh, forget the, just the, the Bank of China. It, it's, uh, speaking of banks, uh, the U.S. banking industry itself holds over a trillion dollars worth of treasuries and another trillion dollars of government-issued mortgage-backed securities. Uh, you know, it, effectively, it would end up making the banks insolvent. All right, let, insolvent. Jumping down to the last paragraph, to summarize, Bove asserts that a default is unthinkable because it would trigger a huge reduction in the value of U.S. debt, which would go beyond disrupting Social Security payments. A default would upend money markets, destroy the bond funds, slam the brakes on lending, cause interest rates to spiral, make our banks insolvent, and deal a, a blow to our foreign trading partners and creditors around the globe, all of which would throw the U.S. and the world into economic disarray. Economic disarray. So there you go, guys. And as much as every word of that paragraph just actually makes this little eco-Nazi's heart sing with joy, I realize uh, that all of this stuff is not going to happen on October 17th. Hopefully it is going to happen over the next, uh, who knows, one year, 10 years, 20 years. But guys, it ain't going to happen on October 17th. But uh, we'll see what my rant sounds like next week on October 14th. But anyway, guys, uh, so pretty much all of the economic news uh, is about this. But I do want to, as I always like to do, wrap up my rants. I'm, I'm going to switch gears here. I always start out by looking at all of this uh, economic news and then, then looking at how big oil is 
being affected by all this? After looking at stock markets and precious metals and all this, how is, and I'm not talking the oil prices here. Uh, I'm just talking about big oil going about their business. With their business is killing the planet. If you guys don't know, they're they're in the business, they're in the business of making themselves rich by killing a planet. So why am I not uh, surprised to find this story from? Uh, and I should do it. And I'll probably make this part of another rant. This is just just for now to wrap up this one. As I often do, this is from AFP, U.S. set to be the top oil and gas producer in 2013. This year, you know, what, what was it? Uh, I feel like six months ago that uh, this is the newest estimates of the, what, who is this? The, the uh, Energy, the U.S. Energy Information Administration. Uh, weren't they like six months ago saying we were going to be the biggest oil producer on this planet in the year 2030? And, and then six weeks ago, they were claiming that we are going to be the biggest uh, oil producer on the planet in 2020. And now, this week, they are claiming the U.S. will be the biggest uh, oil producer this year. All right. The United States could push past Russia and Saudi Arabia as the world's single, the world's largest single producer of oil and natural gas this year, a U.S. government agency said Friday. While the U.S. was roughly even with Russia as the top producer in 2012, uh, of the petroleum and gas fuels combined, it still lagged behind the long-term leader, Saudi Arabia, as an oil producer. And I don't know where Canada and all their tar sands is mixed into this. But helped by the boom in hydraulic fracturing or fracking production from shale deposits, the U.S. will surpass the Saudis in petroleum output in 2013, making us the world leader in each fuel, the U.S. Energy Information Administration said. And I will uh, put the link on so you can read all of the small print on this story. Guys, I'm not going to use the tail end of my economic meltdown roundup rant, rant, rant to get into my peak, another one of my broken record, peak oil rants. But, uh, and there are plenty of people who are claiming uh, whether or not this particular story is horseshit, that within 10 years that all of this fracking is a huge bubble and, and is going to come crashing down in the next 10 years. But uh, the way things are going, guys, uh, the peak oil people still claiming uh, that global industrial society is an imminent threat of, of coming down because of peak oil. Uh, guys, you know, the, the digger you, the deeper you dig in your boot heels, uh, anyway, I, I'm not even going to get off on it. I'm just going to leave my economic meltdown roundup rant with, good for you, big oil. Uh, they're going right ahead. It is business as usual uh, in this country and on this planet as, as the planet eaters completely ignore all of the, this little horse shit about any U.S. government shutdown or debt limit or anything else. The choppers are still flying. And with that, I will wrap up and the sound of the chopper blades. I will wrap up this week's edition of my 
economic meltdown roundup rant and say, bye guys.